last night outside the ice house on a very icy day with Jason Kelly. Thanks for stopping by yeah, on our no food problem. day, the CEO of Ginkgo Bioworks. Now we're talking about the future of food. Tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing. Yeah, sure. So Ginkgo Bioworks for about a 120 person biotech company in Boston. And what we're doing is bringing biotechnology into the consumer space. So we're using it to make things like flavors and fragrances and cosmetic ingredients and nutritional ingredients. Historically, biotechnology has been mainly applied for things like pharmaceuticals, but as the costs have come down, you're starting to see it open up all these new markets. And what are you doing? You're using yeast to make these, is that right? Yeah, so what we do is, so imagine today, uh, rose oil that goes into a perfume. You get that by basically picking rose petals, pressing them, and getting the oil out. Mm -hmm. What we do is we sequence the genome mm -hmm. of that rose. So every organism has a, a code of A's and T's and C's and G's DNA mm -hmm. that encodes what it does. We read that code, we find the genes for making the fragrance, mm -hmm. we move those into brewer's yeast like you'd use to make beer. Mm -hmm. Except when we brew it up, instead of beer coming out, rose oil comes out. 50% cost of goods reduction, big improvement in the supply chain. And so we do that for customers like ADM and Cargill, big food companies, flavor and fragrance companies, things like that. So what else are you making out of yeast? So yeah, so it's really interesting what's happening uh, at both at Ginkgo but also other uh, companies in the space is as this cost is coming down, there's a company for example called Bolt Threads out in California that's using biotechnology in the textile space. Mm -hmm. So what they've done is they, uh, today like for example silk for mm -hmm. making your clothes comes from silkworms. There's other types of silk in nature, like spider silk, mm -hmm. uh, bet more, you know, stronger and lighter, different mm -hmm. properties. You can use it for like performance athletic wear. Mm -hmm. What they do is sequence that spider, find the genes for the silk, move those into brewer's yeast. Same process, brew it up like you would beer, but out comes spider silk in this case. So it's a really a flexible platform. Once you're able to design these yeast, you can use them to make all kinds of new products that historically uh, you, you wouldn't have been able to. It's extraordinary. So what are you most excited about in this? technology. So the thing that gets me excited is, you know, I think people, uh, uh, I think you're going to see biotechnology starting to tell like new product stories. So mm -hmm. up till now, biotech's kind of been in the background, like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, this thing with, with foods and, and with, with drugs and things like that. But what we're, what we're going to see now is kind of exciting new uh, stories that like capture the imagination with biotech. So for example, what we've done uh, in the last six months is sequence five uh, extinct flowers. Okay. Yeah, so, so there's, uh, if you go like into Alaska or in Russia, like in uh, where there's like kind of persistent um, snow, you can mm -hmm. find basically plant matter with plants that have been extinct since the last ice age. Mm -hmm. Sequence that genome, again, find the genes for the fragrance, mm -hmm. move those into yeast, and you can't bring back the plant, but you can resurrect the scent. Okay. And so, you know, this will be a, a, being letting people smell for the first time this lost scent of this extinct flower. How amazing. And how yeah. inexpensive is it? Because you're doing it in Boston, but yeah. could, you, could you see it being done in, in Africa and places where, uh, not for rose oil, for sure. example, but for, some, for food, for example? Yeah, I think this is going to be one of the big trends of the, of the next kind of, this, this century is, is essentially the democratization of biotechnology in the same way we saw this happen with information technology. Mm -hmm. You know, at Ginkgo, for example, over the last year, the cost for us to do this kind of work has fallen by a factor of 3x. So okay. from January 1st last year to December 31st, got three times cheaper to do biotechnology in our facility. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is we have automation and robotics. We're basically kind of scaling up that mm -hmm. process. And so if that keeps going, that's like our version of a Moore's Law okay. in computers, right? And so if it gets cheaper and cheaper, you should see it being applied all over the place, right? Same way you do with information tech. Jason, thank you so much. I've yeah. learned an incredible amount. My brain's about to explode <laughs> with spider silk. <laughs> thank you very much yeah, for yeah. stopping Pleasure, by the yeah. Hub, Take Hub care. Pavilion. I'm Edie Mush.